This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. This is Richie Ashburn of the Philadelphia Phillies. In a few moments, I'll tell you about my greatest sports thrill. This is Harry Wismer. What you're about to hear is a transcribed story of one of baseball's outstanding players and an event our special guest, Richie Ashburn, considers his greatest sports thrill. And Richie himself is here to tell us all about it. But first, here is Bill Reddick with a message of interest from your United States Air Force. In the past few years, we've heard a lot about football teams with desire. A team with desire alone, however, will rarely defeat a team with desire and experience. Experience is vital in the Air Force, too. Some of the most important men contributing to the success of Air Force projects are experienced technicians. These specialists are thoroughly trained in electronics and missile systems. Many of them are former servicemen, perhaps like yourself. Think of it. Your experience and background may lead to a good starting rank in the Air Force. 30-day annual paid vacations, tax-free allowances for food, quarters, and clothing. If qualified, you'll serve with volunteers, and you'll advance with the space age. Former service women are also needed by the Air Force. So why not see your local recruiter about Air Force opportunities for former service men and women real soon? There's no obligation, of course. And now back to Harry Wismer. For 11 seasons now, Richie Ashburn has been delivering base hits in remarkable quantity. He has a lifetime batting average of .315. He covers as much ground in the outfield as any of the more glamorized fly chasers. He is one of the fastest men on the bases. Yet it wasn't until 1958 that Richie Ashburn gained recognition as one of the outstanding stars in the game today. It wasn't until he won his second National League batting title that the fans began to appreciate just how good Ashburn is. It isn't surprising that the baseball public has been so slow to accept Richie Ashburn as a standout. He doesn't look imposing at the plate. His measured swing lacks power or grace. Opposing infielders and outfielders disdainfully close in on him. But he keeps coming up with a single here and a double there. By the end of the year, he has more hits than most of the sluggers. In 1958, he collected 215 hits, more than anybody else in either of the major leagues. Richie Ashburn's true hitting stature is not something you recognize at a glance, and neither is the driving temperament that has put him where he is. Ashburn is one of baseball's real bear-down guys. When Richie Ashburn won his second batting crown with as great a finish as one would care to see, he simply said the hits were dropping in for him. He wrapped up the title in a four-way race that was a real pressure cooker in the stretch. The pitching is getting better, observed Richie Ashburn after it was all over, but so is Richie. At 32, the speedster out of Tilden, Nebraska, showed no signs of slowing down. He stole 30 bases in 1958. His 350 average and his 215 hits represented personal peaks, exceeding efforts like those in 1948 when he was Rookie of the Year with a 333 mark in 1951 when he batted 344. As long as his legs remain sturdy, Richie Ashburn should be good for a half a dozen more seasons, a stretch that may place him within reach of 3,000 hits. He passed 2,000 August 15, 1958, and is younger than Stan Musial was when he attained that milestone. Richie Ashburn is not only a sound hitter, but an exceptionally fine fielder. In 1958, he made 500 putouts, more than any other National League outfielder. This was the ninth time he had done so, to equal the Major League record established by Max Carey, the former great defensive outfielder of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Richie Ashburn's only flaw is that his throwing arm is not the strongest in the league. Yet, he made the most important single throw in the last game of the 1950 season. It was the ninth inning with the Dodgers and Phillies tied 1-1. The Phillies, leading the Dodgers by one game, needed that victory to clinch the flag. The Dodgers, on the other hand, had to win this game to deadlock the Phils and force a playoff for the pennant. Cal Abrams of the Dodgers was on second, 
representing the winning run. When Duke Snyder lashed the line drive to center, Abrams lit out for home. Ritchie was playing shallower than he usually does for Snyder. That ball was hit so hard that Ashman grabbed it on the first bounce and fired home. Abrams was out by a city block. In the 10th, Dick Sessler hit a home run for the Phillies, and the whiz kids won the pennant. Richie Ashburn is the product of a solid family life in the small Nebraska farm town of Tilden, population 1,040, where he still makes his home. He was one of the original whiz kids who became the darlings of the country in 1950 while bringing Philadelphia its only pennant of recent times. Richie was one of the most dedicated ball players on the club. Back in 1948, Richie Ashburn broke in with a splash, batting 333 in 117 games and being acclaimed by the Sporting News as Rookie of the Year. In the ten succeeding years, he has finished eight seasons batting 300 or better. Pretty good for a fellow whom they said was nothing more than a leg hitter. Richie Ashburn has hit only 21 home runs in 11 years in the big leagues. He says his greatest satisfaction would be to become a home run slugger. The Philadelphia Phillies want him as he is, just about the most consistent hitter in the National League. That's a fact that opposing pitchers have recognized for a long, long time. Richie Ashburn, the batter who is always on base. And now, before you meet our special guest, Richie Ashburn in person, in an interview from Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia, and hear about his greatest sports thrill, here is a message of interest to all young men with an eye on the future. It has been wisely said that the best things in life are worth planning for. That's why former servicemen who are planning a successful career should look into Air Force opportunities now. If your specialty is needed, you'll have an important job with a guaranteed future. Today, there are fine career openings in electronics, missile systems, and other interesting fields. Your experience and background may entitle you to a good starting rank, a guaranteed annual income, consistent pay increases, and countless other Air Force benefits. And, of course, you'll be a vital, respected member of today's great Space Age defense team. Young ladies, there are fine opportunities for you in the Air Force, too. Yes, former servicemen and women are needed in many categories. So take time to investigate the exciting Air Force Space Age positions now open to men and women with prior service. See your local recruiter for full details. And now, back to Harry Wismer. Richie Ashburn, what was your greatest sports thrill? Well, Harry, I'd have to go back to 1950 when I was with the uh, Phillies, of course, still with the Phillies, but uh, that was our one and only year that we won the pennant, and I'd have to go back to the last game of the season when we won it uh, from the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers. That was when Roberts won the game 4-1. to one. Dick Sisler hit a three-run home run in the 10th inning. That particular moment after the game, I think, was was my greatest thrill, Harry. Do you recall your first appearance at the plate in a Philly uniform? Uh, yes, I do. It was in 1948, opening day in Philadelphia, and it was against the Boston Braves. And Johnny Sane was a pitcher, and I got put out. Johnny was, a, of course, a, uh, a great curveball pitcher and, and was a very good pitcher, uh, that year, I think you remember, that was the year of 48 uh, that they won the pennant, and, of course, Johnny was one of their stars. Richie, being one of the fastest men in the league, what pitchers down through the years have been the toughest for you to steal on? Uh, I think that everybody will say that uh, Warren Spahn of the uh, Milwaukee Braves is one of the toughest and, and still is. Left-handed pitchers are a little tougher than uh, right-handed pitchers. Uh, one of the toughest right-handers that uh, I had ever tried to steal against was Herman Weimar when he was over here with the uh, Cincinnati Reds. As an outstanding bunter, what are some of the important things to keep in mind when trying to move a base runner along or just bunting for a base hit? Well, bunting, uh, bunting today, uh, uh, there isn't too much of it, but it's still, uh, I think, uh, mighty important in the game, Harry. Uh, there is a difference in the uh, situations when you're just trying to move a runner along. You're sacrificing yourself and uh, you're naturally, you're just uh, squaring around at the plate, and then, uh, uh, you're trying to get a strike and bunt the ball down, move that runner along. When you're trying for the base hit, you're trying to beat it out. And for me, that is getting uh, 
tough because of the way the infield plays. I mean, the third baseman is real close and the first baseman is real close, and I have to almost lay down a perfect bunt to beat it out. I uh, One of the things I, I will say that I try to do is bunt the ball on the uh, very end of the bat, and the ball uh, will drop dead if you can... Uh, if you can do that, which, uh, of course, makes it a little tougher for the uh, infielders to handle. Richie, do you have any pet theories of your own on the art of hitting? Harry, I have a few that I think would apply to my style of hitting. Uh, I primarily try to hit the ball where it's pitched. I'm up on the plate. I, uh, I'm over what I'm trying to say is I'm over the plate. Uh, close to it, I guard it, and I don't give the pitcher any part of the plate. I more or less leave the where the ball is going to go up to the pitcher to ever what part of the plate he throws it. Richie, what's going through your mind as you stand on first base with the idea of stealing second base? Well, uh, one of the things I try to do is to get, uh, first of all, is to get a good lead. And uh, I study the pitcher's uh, techniques, his mannerism. You steal on the pitcher most of the time. You very seldom steal on the catcher. So a study of the pitcher's uh, movements will help you. And if I know his movements and I have a good lead, and uh, I think with the speed I have that I can steal the base, no matter how the catcher throws the ball. What player, coach, or manager has been most helpful in your development as a major leaguer? Harry, I've had a lot of people help me in this game, uh ever since I've been in baseball from American Legion ball on up. Right now, I would say that our present manager, Eddie Sawyer, who was also my minor league manager, helped me an awful lot. Uh, Wally Moses, who is presently the coach of the Cincinnati Reds, uh, helped me uh, with hitting a lot, as did Floyd Baker, who is a scout for the Washington Senators now. Right offhand, I'd uh, say those three players probably helped me more than anybody uh, I can think of. Do you resent the pitcher using the brush back or knockdown pitch? I think there's a difference between the two, Harry. A brush back pitch, I, I think, is justified because uh, these pitchers have to protect their own interests, and that's getting the hitter out. Now, uh, the knockdown pitch, to me, that's something different uh, because a knockdown pitch is thrown, I think, with the intent of trying to hit somebody and trying to hurt somebody. I feel this way when I'm hitting. Now, I don't mind being brushed back a bit because, as I said before, I am on top of the plate, and those pitchers, when uh, they go inside on me, once in a while will brush me back. But if I feel a pitcher is, is deliberately trying to hit me, that I think it makes a little better hitter out of me. I don't know. It does make me mad. I don't like the knockdown pitch. The brush back pitch, I think, is justified. Richie, not being a long ball hitter, do you recall the longest home run you ever hit? Well, I certainly do, Harry. I, I don't hit many of them, and I remember them all. The longest one I hit, I think, was in Philadelphia off Marv Grissom. This was in the 1958 season. I really, I really tore into that one, so to speak, and uh, I was real proud of it. Harry, I don't think they uh, got the tape measure out for it. <laughs> I don't know for sure how far it went, uh, but it did go over that right field wall, and to me, that's quite a poke. Richie, do you get much conversation from various catchers around the league when you're up to bat? There are some catchers that talk to you quite a bit. I'd say Ed Bailey of the Cincinnati Reds is one that talks quite a bit. Valmy Thomas, uh, who was with the San Francisco Giants and who is now with our ball club, we used to have a very nice conversation. He used to tell me what was coming, but he'd always throw something different. <laughs> uh, once in a while, they'll they'll talk to you a little bit. I don't especially like it myself. I think they do it to keep you from concentrating. I'd just assume they'd keep quiet back there. Thank you very much, Richie Ashburn of the Philadelphia Phillies, one of baseball's outstanding players. Greatest Sports Thrills with top personalities in the world of sports is narrated by Harry Wismer, directed by Gene Kirby, written by Arthur Susskind, Jr., and presented by the United States Air Force in cooperation with this station. This is Bill Reddick speaking. The preceding was transcribed.